This is episode 99 of the Peak Signing Agents podcast, where for 99 episodes, I'm helping you become the best notary and signing agent that you can be. And that means next episode will be episode 100. I can't believe it. Episode 100. I'm excited. I hope you are enjoying the journey and the ride along with me. I know some of you have been here since episode one, and some of you have caught up and you're all the way caught up from episode one. And thank you so much. I appreciate it. So many people have been sharing the podcast and sharing the YouTube channel and just spreading the word that, hey, there's episodes, there's information out there for your questions. And and I just want to say I appreciate you all. So thank you so much. And actually, right before I got here, I started texting um, my guest for episode 100. And so we have a date planned. We're getting the time coordinated. And so we should be good for next week's episode. Well, I appreciate you. One person I want to give a shout out to who actually just messaged me today is Jason Colts from, I believe he's from Texas. And he was just talking about how he enjoys the podcast and that he's he's actually thinking, you know, um, congratulating me on almost 100 episodes coming up. And he actually just sent me a message also just saying, hey, I ran into this situation in a signing recently and it was an LLC and there was a trust and I wasn't sure how the verbiage works. And he goes, what? You know, maybe for I, he wasn't sure exactly what to do, so he said maybe a, a a future episode. And I said, hey, I appreciate all the kind words. You might want to check out episode seventy five, where I do talk about how to sign in trust and LLCs and powers of attorneys. And he said, oh my goodness, it's like it's like Seinfeld, so many great gems. And then you have to rewatch it, and you find more gems when you after you you've rewatched it. And I agree one hundred percent, Jason. That's right. Any type of information that you're consuming most likely you are not going to consume and understand it all on the first visit i do recommend anything that you're watching or listening to whether it's this podcast or youtube channel or anything else watch it multiple times is more likely you'll retain more information watch it multiple or listen to it multiple times so thank you for that shout out and shout out back to you okay let's get into the episode i'm gonna get my notes ready because i have lots of notes for you all Because last week or last episode, I talked about how to keep your vehicle and your car, uh, keep it up and going so it runs for the long run for your business. Now I want to talk about you, making you last for the long run in this business. So we're talking about how to be healthy, how to stay healthy when you're busy and on the road. So I want to talk about that because uh, it's very personal for me, this this episode a little bit, and I'll, I'll get more personal towards the end. So if you want to stick around towards the end, I have something I want to share with everybody. But health is very important to me. I used to be very big into health and being healthy and, and, and working out and I used to be pretty fit back in the days. And then, you know, entrepreneur world hit and it was just kind of hard. It's harder when you don't have a set schedule. You know, when I had a set schedule, and maybe you all can attest to this, when you have a set schedule, like at a job, and you just know, hey, this is where this is where I'm going to be at during the day, and I can go to the gym before or after or any other time with, with some friends or family. I can go to the gym later and work out and be healthy because I know what time I'll be home, and I can plan my dinners and my lunch, and I can pack a lunch and bring it to work. But when you're like us and you're an entrepreneur and you don't have a set schedule, you never know what your day, you can start off your day with two appointments and end up the day with five or six, you know, and you're just all over the place. And that happens a lot, especially with entrepreneurs. And that's happened to me the last 15 years or so as I've been an entrepreneur. And I can definitely tell, you know, I can tell, definitely tell I've gained weight, especially during COVID when a lot of places were shut down and the interest rates were so low that constantly on the road with so many appointments. I was doing, you know, eight signings a day, every day, Monday through Friday, and still on Saturdays doing a couple more on Saturdays. So it was easy just to, you know, go through drive through because like I said, a lot of restaurants were closed during that time uh, because of COVID. But anyway, that's an excuse and I need to own up to it. And so now I've changed my habits. I've lost 15, 20 pounds already. I'm feeling great. Um, and you know, I've also had some health issues that I'll, I'll share, I guess in the beginning. So I wanted to share tips with all of you on how to stay healthy, be healthy, even though we're entrepreneurs, even though we're busy, even though we're on the road, we can still do it. First of all, we have to get the excuses out of our head that we can't, we definitely can. I've got some tips here for you. If you feel like I'm missing any tips, feel free to comment, go to YouTube and comment if I missed anything or anything you want to add, I would 
I would love to hear more about it. And I can go a lot of different ways in health, okay? I can go in a lot of different routes. And I was just like, how can I just, you know, condense this down to, for us, for us, the notaries and signing agents that are busy, we're on the road. How can I condense the information I have that I want to share? Because at one time I wanted to be a dietitian. At one time I wanted to be a personal trainer. Another time I wanted to open up my own gym. So I, uh, I feel really passionate about the health and fitness world. And I've kind of lost it uh, for a while. And I'm excited to be back in it. So let's talk about it. First of all, we're talking about safety. Um, I know I mentioned this last episode about you know, vehicle maintenance and, and being safe, but also because we're on the road a lot, try to stay off your phones, try to use Bluetooth devices. Hopefully your car is equipped or you can put one in your ear while you're driving so that you're safe while you're on the road. Keep your eyes on the road. You know, you can always pull over and answer an email, answer a phone call, answer a text. You can always pull over and do that. All right. Speaking of sitting in the vehicle, being in the vehicle, let's talk about our posture. Our posture is very important. In fact, funny enough, I'm actually trying to sit up straight right now in the back of the mobile office here that I'm recording out of. But posture is important because one thing we don't want to have are humps. You know, we don't want to get a hunchback from the way we're sitting, um, the way we sit down even normally when we eat or whatever. So my tips, because earlier I actually had a big back issue. I uh, found out later it was a herniated disc, so I had a lot of back problems for a while. But because I'm able, uh, I was able to learn from that. I do things a lot safer, the, like the way I lift and the way I walk and and the way I sit is very important. So I don't know about you guys, but when I was in my 20s, and early teens, getting my first car, I used to crank the seat back and just lean back in my seat, try to be Mr. Cool Guy, you know, in my car. And I, I think it's so funny. Sometimes I'll sit in, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll go somewhere with my brother or my daughter and I'll sit in their car and I'll be the passenger. I'm like, who was sitting here? Who was like leaning back so far? And I look at their seat. I look at my brother's seat or my daughter's seat and their seat, their seat is so reclined back, but then they are kind of sitting up a little bit because they have to reach the steering wheel. I'm like, what are you doing? So anyway, let me tell you what I've learned from chiropractors and physical therapists. You want to bring your seat as close as you can to the steering wheel so that, you know, your hands are in a good position on the steering wheel and that you're not stretching your legs to step on the gas and brake pedal. If you are stretching your legs to accelerate and brake, you're too far back. You need to bring up. You need to get your seat up as close as 90 degrees as possible that's comfortable for you. You don't want to be leaning back. You want to be sitting up so your back is straight. You want that good posture or else it the way it leverages your lower back when you're kind of reclining too far back is not good for your lower back. So you want to have a good posture. Get your seat up to the steering wheel so that you're not stretching your legs. You're comfortable. Your seat is almost to 90 degrees. Whatever is comfortable for you. Um, and, that, and that will just kind of help you as well. Um, even at home, even at home, my, my, my office chair at home, it does not recline backward. I mean, it can, I just don't have that all. I just, you know, th there's the buttons underneath the seat. You can recline or adjust the height up or down. You want to make sure your feet are flat on the ground. Your knees are, are your, your, well, your legs are bent at 90 degrees so that your, your thighs are parallel to the ground. And your feet are touching the ground flat footed. That's how you want to make sure your seats are adjusted. And then again, have your seat up. I don't, I don't, I turn off the reclining of my chair so that I can't recline, get in that bad habit. I'm sitting upright. And in fact, I invested a few years ago into a stand up desk. So I just raise it up. I can stand or I can sit. So if I know I'm going to be at the desk for a while, I know I'm doing a lot of things at the desk. I raise up some standing and that's what I do at home. So just some tips there real quick about being healthy because when you're sitting down too long, you're just kind of compacting your organs. You know, we're driving, we're sitting at the table, uh, we're to do documents, and we're just sitting down. Like we're at home, we're printing, we're filling out things. So if you can stand or if you can have good posture, that will help you. All right. Another thing, speaking of being out and, and doing closings, I carry hand sanitizer. I carry hand sanitizer i mean i'm in the mobile office i have one right next to me in, in the cup holder for pens so i got one here i have one in my notary bag i've got one in the glove box so at any given moment i have three hand sanitizers in 
or, and around me at any given moment. I've got a, I've got one or up to three around me. If I'm at a house, I can tell it's a little dirty. I'm putting hand sanitizer. I'm always putting hand sanitizer on. And so that's important. Carry hand sanitizer. Just keep the little little ones. If you're watching on, on YouTube or Spotify, you see I've, I got a little one with actually has my branding on it. And I just have the little hand sanitizer I just keep around with me all the time. So I keep hand sanitizer. I wash my hands a lot. Every time before I eat, I'm washing my hands. Anytime I go to the restroom, I'm washing. I, I wash my hands, use hand sanitizer. Keep it clean. Okay. All right. Let's uh, transition a little bit. One area that I really got bad at, one area I was really slacking at, especially because when I was so busy, was my lack of sleep. I was not getting enough sleep. I was out doing closings 8, 10, 12 hours a day, come home, spend a little bit of time with family, then go down or down to my office and I would start printing documents for the next day, getting them prepared, getting everything organized, planning out my day. And I was getting, I was probably averaging, I'll say this, for about three or four years, I've been averaging about four hours a night of sleep. And that is not good. That is really not good. So you want to make sure you're getting good sleep. How can we do that? Well, let's talk about the ways that prevent us from sleeping. That's our phones. That is our phones. Stay off of your phone. Stay off of social media when you're going to bed. What I've been doing now is reading books again. I've been reading books again. I've kind of been slacking on books because, you know, while I'm driving a lot, I'm listening to audiobooks or podcasts, but I, I notice I'm staying up because I'm on social media or YouTube. I'm staying away from videos. At night, I am laying down, I'm pulling out my book, and I'm reading a book in bed, and it definitely makes me tired, and I put it down and I go to sleep when it's time. And I'm trying to get at least a minimum of seven hours, six and a half to seven hours of sleep minimum a night now. So that is what I'm doing. That's my tip for you. Another thing to help you also get a little tired, maybe if you decide to plan your exercises, maybe do it towards the end of the night. You know your phone's not going to be going off. You're done with all your closings. All the signing services and telecom companies are closed. You're not going to be getting notifications that we're like, I got to respond to this. Exercise in the evening. That will make you exercise and that will make your body tired and you'll be getting ready for sleep. But also what's good about reading books is now you're exercising your mind as well. So, I mean, you can read fantasy books and fictional books, but I, I'm a big believer in learning. So I'm, I read a lot of uh, biographies and autobiographies and, and books from successful entrepreneurs. And that's kind of what I'm reading tonight to put, to exercise my brain. So I'm not just working out my my external body and my internal body, but also my brain. Speaking of the exercise, though, let's plan it. I think it's very good to try to plan your, try to get in a routine where every day you are trying to exercise at a certain time every day. Now, I know as entrepreneurs, it's kind of hard to do that, but maybe at the nighttime, it makes it make me a little easier. Or sometimes you're just busy at a long day. You've been out doing closings all day. You've been out marketing all day, whatever it is, and you get tired. But you know what you can always do, though? You can always go for a walk. When it's when the weather's a little nicer, actually, me and my family, we like to go on a walk together. And that's where now me and my wife can talk and catch up for the day. All right, how was your day? How, how Was it stressful? Was it good? And now we can talk and we're walking. We're getting exercise. We're letting the kids ride their bikes or walk with us. And, you know, they're getting exercise, too. And so that is a good thing that we like to do. You know, I was in a, one of my title companies yesterday doing a closing. And obviously, there's an elevator. I've been taking the stairs. So I've been taking the stairs up to my clients or, you know, if you're marketing, you know, take the stairs, you can park further away. So if you're going into an office building, you're going to a FedEx or UPS, uh, you're going running errands, maybe you're going to a store running errands, park further away. Less likely you'll get scratches and dings on your vehicle, but also you're walking further away in the parking lot. You're just getting exercise and you're getting more exposure to the sun. Most Americans are have a huge deficiency in vitamin D, which we get from the sun. And if you're in areas like where I live, where we get winter and it's cloudy a lot of times, there are you, you know weeks and months without seeing the sun. So that gives you great exposure to the sun. A lot of great health benefits getting some sun. Now, not too much, right? You want to put a little bit of sunblock every day to prevent, um, block out those UV rays. But yeah, those are some of my tips there for you. 
Uh, another thing that I have been doing has been very important to me is I carry a reusable water bottle. And I wish I would have grabbed it. It's in the front of my console there in the cup holder. I have a 26 ounce reusable. I, in fact, I have a steel bottle. It's made out of steel. And I and it, that way it will stay warm or stay cold for a long period of time. And I keep that. In fact, the very first thing I do every morning when I wake up, the first thing I do are check my emails real quick to see if any notifications come from my clients or any notaries that maybe did a job late at night or something like that. I'm checking my notifications and then right away I'm getting, I'm filling up my bottle and I'm drinking the whole bottle. That's the first thing I do is I, I rehydrate my body. I've been sleeping for, you know, six, seven, eight hours and we get, high, we get dehydrated during that time. Time to rehydrate. And a lot of times when the first thing you do when you wake up, what do you do? You go to the restroom actually, right? So you need to rehydrate. So that's the first thing I do in the morning. I drink a big bottle of water and then I refill it and I take it with me. And I fill it up all the time. I go, I'll stop at a gas station. A lot of my clients, their offices have water fountains and I fill it up there. I'm always carrying my water bottle. Another good thing about that is because then I can take it into a restaurant. If I have to stop and eat somewhere, I can take my water bottle. It prevents me from getting soda. It prevents me from getting like an energy th drink thing I need. Oh my gosh, I'm so tired. I need a coffee. I need... Uh, a, a monster or Red Bull energy. You don't need any of that stuff. That stuff is bad for you. That stuff is full of sugar, makes you crash. It's a quick pick me up and a quick put me down. So I stay away from all that extra sugars and I just carry water with me. In fact, I've switched over to alkaline water. Uh, I've, I've been putting in an alkaline unit into my house right now. And I've switched over to that type of water, but I am carrying my water bottle. It flushes you out. It keeps you clean, keeps your internal body nice and clean. Sodas and energy drinks are just full of sugar and carbonation. And that is so bad for your body. And I am just staying away from it. And that was the thing, to be honest with you all. I got a little addicted to soda. And I did, especially if I knew I was going to be driving a further distance or it was maybe later in the evening. I'm like, oh, gosh, I could really use a pick me up or, you know, kind of give a little spike in, in energy and in my blood sugar. And I'm going to get a little get some soda. And then I got addicted to it. And I wanted soda all the time, like at least once a day I wanted it. I didn't always have, but I, probably a few days a week I was having soda. I now have not had soda in. I can't even tell you how long it's been since I've had soda. It's been weeks, maybe months. And I just drinking water, just drink lots of water. Just, I probably try to drink my bottle. I try to have at least four of those a day. So that's, oh, that's about over a hundred, um, ounces, about over a hundred ounces. So that's, I'm having lots of water every day. Uh, okay. We talked about, you know, I, I take my water bottle everywhere I go. And then even if I go into a restaurant to eat, I take it. So let's talk about going into restaurants, going out to eat. We're busy. Um, Maybe we have to go stop and eat somewhere. I do try to pack a lunch now. I have a little lunch bag and I put ice packs in there. And the ice, the lunch bag, I, in fact, I'll just be honest. I use Yeti products. I like the brand Yeti. I use Yeti bottles. I use a Yeti lunch bag. It keeps it inside cooler longer. And then you add the ice packs and it helps keep it cooler longer. That's just what I like to use. And I'll pack healthy food and I can eat it on the road or I can stop at a gas station, warm it up in their microwave, whatever it is. In fact, I'm trying to stay away from microwaves too. I'm doing everything on the stove top. But anyway, I try to pack a lunch the best I can. And and if I still, let's, let's just say I'm out all day long and I need to stop somewhere, I'm trying to pick the best options out there. So I'm going, and I'm already kind of pre-planning where, where I'm going, looking maybe at restaurants in that area. I'm trying to get rice bowls. So rice bowls with grilled chicken not nothing fried but with grilled chicken and beans i'm looking at places that have that i'm looking at salads that also will maybe have um some type of protein in it as well or i'm getting wraps i'm, I'm actually staying away from bread bread and sugar i've actually stayed away from but what i would do is let's just say like hey i'm i'm i've i've done good all week now i'm going to treat myself on saturday I had no sugar all week on Friday, Monday through Friday, and now Saturday or Sunday. Now, guess what? Now I'm going to have the fried chicken. Now I'm going to have uh, a cookie. That's what I, I'm actually just staying away from it all myself. But if I was not being so strict 
right now, that's what I would do. Just kind of treat myself where I was treating myself very frequently during the week. You know, I'm like, oh, I'm going out marketing. I'm buying donuts. I'm buying cookies. I'm buying something. I'm buying candy. I'm bringing in. Oh, you know what? I did a good job today. I also deserve one of these donuts or cookies. Bad habit that I got into. I'm staying away from sugars. So, but treat yourself on a weekend if it, if you know you did really good during the week. But that's for when you need to treat yourself. Not thinking, oh, today I did this. I need to treat myself for every little thing I do. That's what I was doing and maybe you might do and I'm just trying to help you stay away from that. It's just about choosing better options. You know, not going through the drive through not getting the hamburgers, not getting the french fries. You know, it's it's about getting the vegetables, getting the fruit. And fruit now is my dessert. So instead of like wanting the cookie and donut, now I'm like, okay, I'm going to get a, a mango. I'm going to have, you know, watermelon now. Something like that. For, for me, that's what I am doing. And, you know, pack snacks, pack some healthy snacks while we're on the road. Bad habit I was getting into, just grabbing whatever was quick and easy, whether it be beef jerky, candy bar, you know, donut, you know, like I said, just, I just, whatever. And man, so bad. So packing healthy snacks, there's a lot of different options you can do. But let me just give you some examples. Slicing up fruit or getting fruit, you know, grapes, slicing up apples, having a banana, protein bars. Energy bars that maybe are not loaded with sugars. Those are going to be really good for you. Protein bars, energy bars, unsalted nuts and seeds. Maybe I, I used to make a trail mix and I just use unsalted nuts, add some cocoa nibs, add some prunes, add some uh, raisins with no sugar on it. And I would just kind of make my own little trail mix. That's what I did. You can get these little to-go containers of like guacamole. Guacamole is really good for you because of the avocado, hummus, tuna. I carry, actually, I'll, I have like those to-go of, of tuna. I just don't put the mayo in it, but I'll just have the, the I'll just put a little bit of the seasoning, like lemon pepper seasoning on, on it. And so that's what I'll do. Or maybe I'll do just a very little bit of mayo so it's not so dry. I'll go very little. Um, but that's what I'll carry with me. Some of those little to-go containers of guacamole, hummus, tuna. Those are the things I'll take. Veggie sticks celery carrots different things like that and that's why i put that's what i'll use for my hummus protein drinks little to go of protein drinks those are great meal replacements because they're going to be a little low in sugar but they're going to have really good you know uh, uh, good calories in there so those are some of the things that i am doing to stay healthy i got really bad got really bad habits and i'm getting back into the good habits and, and you know i've been losing weight feeling strong feeling good feeling active, ready to go out there and conquer the day. And that's what I want for you. And, you know, you can use your cheat days. You know, do really good during the week and you can have your, your weekends be your cheat day if you want. Uh, another good thing to do is supplements, getting supplements. That was something I also was lacking in. Now I'm doing, you know, it's really hard to get all the nutrients you need in a day. So multivitamins are really good for that other thing, you know, omegas. Uh, the, those fatty things that are good for your brain, those the, 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 the good fats, the healthy fats. Uh, so omega-3s, omega-12s, B vitamins are really going to be strong for you as well, protein. So, you know, you want to supplement some of these things because it's hard to get all the nutrients in, especially if you're busy and you're running around. It's hard to get all your nutrients in. And so these type of things are good for you. I'm doing a lot of herbal uh, vitamins that I'm taking uh, as well to kind of help my, my body. And so that's some of the things that I'm taking. So supplementing to help get all the nutrients in our bodies and vitamins. And, and then listening to your body, paying attention to your body. If something happens, you feel something, you see something, you know, something's unusual, go check it out. Um, get your regular checkups, whatever you need, whatever stage of life you're in, get your regular checkups. Uh, I'm 43 right now and, you know, there's nothing really that I, that I'm required to be doing for regular checkups besides maybe a, a physical once in a while. But, um, it's important to listen to our bodies and pay attention to what our bodies are saying. I'm, uh, getting a little nervous right now because I'm going to share something very personal with you all. Um, I've had, I had something come up and I noticed something. And I was like, what is that? So I went to go to my doctor and check it out. And he's like, well, it might be this, might be that. But, you know, I want you to turn in a sample and we can, we can check it out. And I just kind of delayed. I thought, I think, it's, I, think it's, I think it's something else and it'll probably get better. Uh, but it didn't. It didn't get better. And 
I was like, okay, maybe I need to do this sample. I, t- I turned it in to the doctor. I said, okay, yeah, we just need to get you in. Let's get let's get you in and uh, get you scheduled for an appointment. Um, let's get you a colonoscopy and just let's, let's just check, make sure everything's good. And they couldn't get me in for a while. <clears throat> and I was a little nervous. I was okay that we kind of delayed it, but I was like, nah, maybe I should get this, you know, scheduled and uh, got it scheduled. And they did a colonoscopy on me and they found um, cancer. <sighs> So, <clears throat> excuse me, I thought I was prepared <laughs> to share, <laughs> guess not quite, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, so my life has been flipped upside down and, um, that's why I was able to cut out, um, sugar so easily when you think you're going to die, uh, it becomes a little easier to, to do it. Uh, and so I've cut out sugars and breads and I've cut out red meat and I'm going mostly plant-based right now. I've actually, I've been thinking about it for a while because I knew like, okay, I'm gaining weight and, uh, you know, I'm eating out and I don't want to, and I want to get back to being healthy. So for, for the last few months, oh, close to a year now, I've been, I've been transitioning slowly. I've been eating more more, you know, a lot more vegetables and fruit and cutting back on red meats and just having, uh, like chicken and, and turkey and, and fish for, for my protein and beans and things like that. So I've been kind of switching over just to be more healthy. And, you know, this is, this definitely was like a, a wake up call for me to really make sure that I'm healthy because, you know, for a few years I, I was not putting the best things in my body. And it's important that we fuel our body with good things and not bad things. And I got into bad habits for a couple years. And so now I was happy to be back into the right habits. And this news has just shook up my whole life and got me scared, really, really scared. But colon cancer is the most curable cancer. So I feel very fortunate about that. Cancer is not like what it used to be, where basically it was a death sentence. It's not like that anymore, thank God. And so now I'm going, you know, I'm trying to do things as natural as possible. I have an appointment for going through radiation and chemotherapy, just to share with you. But it's not like what it used to be, where it just we used to just dismantle your whole body. Now it's more targeted towards the area. And uh, unfortunately, it's not where an area where they feel like they can just go in and remove it. They kind of feel like it's not in that type of an area. And so we have to go through radiation chemotherapy. I'm also looking at maybe supplementing this and trying to do things more natural. I've looked at a couple other tests where I maybe can avoid that and try another type of treatment. i just not sure. I used to be very scared of the radiation chemotherapy, but after talking to some of the doctors, I feel a little bit more positive about it. Because like I said, it's a little bit more targeted and it's not going to be the aggressive kind of chemo where I'm going to lose my hair. Oh no. But, uh, um, but I'm going to get through this. Not that I think I will. I know I will. I know I'll get through this. And I just want you all... <clears throat> excuse me. I want you all to take care of yourself. Be there for your family. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll catch you on the next episode. Take care. Bye.